Okay, here's a typical problem from Gauss's law uh, with cylindrical symmetry. Uh, they give you a long solid cylindrical charge distribution of radius capital R, and it's four centimeters, uh, with a uniform charge density rho uh, in the long cylinder. Use Gauss's law to find the electric field at a distance little r, six centimeters from the axis. So that's outside of the cylinder. So perhaps uh, at point P here, uh, which is, you know, at point P here, uh, which is at a distance um, little r, right? So it's from the axis. So if this is the axis here, you know, that's the radius or the distance r. So, so since the problem has cylindrical symmetry, by that I mean, you know, any linear charge distribution like this or cylindrical charge distribution like this, we know that the electric field is radially outwards in all directions. So it has the cylindrical symmetry. So it suggests that we draw a Gaussian surface passing through this point P, right, uh, of radius so, so we draw a Gaussian cylinder of radius r and some length l. I just want to make sure that it's not as long as the original uh, cylinder itself. So let me see if I can draw an OK cylinder here. So I want it to pass through this point P, right? Yeah, it's not very really nicely drawn, but you can imagine an ideal cylinder here, right? So it's um, enclosing this charge distribution, right? So, so this, the length of the cylinder is L and the radius is little r. And as we have seen, the electric field at point P, because it's positively charged, you know, I'm expecting the electric field to be radially outwards. Uh, in all directions, as we have um, seen over here. So you can see there is a flux through the curved surface, right? And formally, I can say if I took a, a little dA vector here, you know, on the on the cylinder, my dA vector points in the same direction as the electric field. Uh, whereas if I took a dA, um, a small area on the cap here, on the right cap, you know, the dA points this way, but the electric field is perpendicular, so there is cosine 90 is zero or there is no flux through that. Uh, same reason through the left cap, you take a small uh, dA, you know, the thing points this way, that's the dA vector and the electric field is perpendicular, right? So, so no contribution to the flux through the caps, but there's only a contribution from the, from the curved surface. Field lines are cutting through the curved surface, right? So if I start from Gauss's law and, and show all the steps for this, uh, so, so this is the uh, surface S, right? Um, let me use a different color. The surface S is this one, right? So um, if I apply Gauss's law to this, uh, I have integral E dot dA is Q in divided by epsilon naught uh, through the Gaussian surface S. And this is a closed surface integral, so I'll have three terms, uh, one through one for each surface, but the only contribution is from the curved surface area. So, so that one will be, um, you know, I'm expecting E to be the same everywhere on the curved surface here. So, so this will end up being just E times the curved surface area, that's two pi R times L, right? Uh, cosine zero because it's you know, those are pointing in the same direction, the electric field and the area vector, or the dA vectors. Um, and then my charge enclosed, you know, that's the charge inside of this Gaussian surface, which is really just on this much of the cylinder of radius capital R, right? So, so, so I'm looking at uh, the amount of charge that's enclosed. Uh, so, so I can write it as charge density rho times the volume and the volume uh, is pi r squared note that i'm making sure i'm using the capital r not the little r here uh, that's that's how much charge there is pi r squared times length l are uh, divided by epsilon naught 
so I'm just using charge density is you know charge divided by the volume right so that's what I'm, I'm using here and um, so yeah so we're almost done and uh, when I see that this L is there are two L's on both sides I get to cancel it uh, I should be happy because that's something that I made up you know um, in each of us we could choose our own special L's um, it's used just to apply Gauss's law so so I'm glad when that cancels off and uh, what else one of the pi's get cancelled as well um, so you can write down the electric field E as rho over 2 epsilon naught times capital R squared divided by little r cosine zero is one right so now we can substitute all the numbers uh, that are given to us rho was given to be three nanocoulomb per cubic meter and capital R that's the radius of the original cylinder that is uh, four centimeters or 0 0.04 meters and epsilon naught is the constant and that's 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared and then i have to multiply by the distance r which was given to be six centimeters or 0 0.06 meters you see and when we are done uh, you can show that this comes out to be 4.52 uh, newtons per coulomb right uh, we can check to make sure the units all work out uh, one of the coulombs is gone cubic meters and meters squared and then there's a meter squared which goes up and there's a meter squared so all these meters goes away so we are left with just uh, coulombs per newton in the bottom so it becomes newtons per coulomb and then because the electric field came out to be positive um, here i know that what i assumed was correct that it is radially outwards so if someone asks you for the electric field you give them both the magnitude and the direction you say this is radially outwards Okay, so um, so perfect example of a cylindrical symmetry. You know, um, uh, sometimes they give you the charge density rho. Uh, sometimes they give you linear charge density lambda. Had they given that, my Q inside would have been lambda times L. Uh, but since rho was given to me, I had to multiply it by volume to get the coulombs. Uh, sometimes you may also be given um, surface charge distribution, right? If that's the case, your Q in will be, you know, you're, you, you can be using all these different formulas. Uh, Q in can be either lambda times L or Q in can be your sigma times the area or it could be rho times the volume. And this is what we got to use uh, in this problem.